Booyaka Shaw, welcome back to the episode of Can't Handle the Heat. I have a therapy session with you, Joe. Me and Jokesy. Take the a room. seat on the couch. Yeah. Joe, why don't you turn around here? Really tell me how you feel. <laughs> why? You never seen in therapy sessions how they... Uh, uh, just they lay down. No, yeah, they have, no, they have one down. guy on the bed, and then the... the what's that guy? The therapist? therapist. <laughs> I was going to say therapy guy. <laughs> it's like right at the end of the bed where they can't see, and they just kind of soothing and asking questions. I took psychology 100 in college, so kind of a big deal about that. Child's pose in Child's the chair. Pose. Child's pose. No, I was about to say All right, I held back from saying something there. Um, that's that's a first gauge. Yeah, good well, job. There was a certain pose I, I held back. Gauge from usually saying. isn't doesn't do that. So yeah, what's your what's your favorite uh, uh, position, Joe? Uh, probably setter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. Okay, okay, got it, got it. <laughs> <laughs> what time on the vlog? What time on the vlog? They're like, Gage, okay, what's your uh, what's your favorite position? I'm like, probably doggy, <laughs> like something like that. I was like, oh god. Yeah, we didn't put that in the vlog. That didn't go in the vlog, for our listeners out there. Um, yeah, that that stuff that stuff won't go in the vlog. <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of stuff not in the vlog or in the podcast, shout out to Mike out here. Uh, couldn't quite make it, unfortunately, due to some circumstances. Um, but he's okay. It's okay. It's just the two solo dolos here. And yeah. I decided to turn the, turn the He's tied up to his wall right now. It's true. He's chained up. Chained he's up. He's chained up in his bed right now. That's what that's right. <laughs> that's right. You it's think we're here. joking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen the video. <laughs> See the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, like, it's early. We're getting weird. I like that, Joe. I like that. Um, but that's those are the podcasts we like. Unhinged, man. Nah, you uh, was it you? You showed me a a clip. I think it was in the so with a, in our group chat. If you can't handle the heat, or how we call it, if you can't handle the feet. Do you remember when you first did that, Joe? If you can't handle the feet. I don't actually remember that. I don't even. You, you made such a big deal about. I don't even know what it's from. Because I had you either intro or outro, and you were like, and you're always really good at it. Then you get really, really ecstatic about it, and then you just yell, "If you, welcome back to another episode, or just remember, if you can't handle the feet, or welcome back to the episode, of if you can't handle the feet, or something like that." And I just remember like turning, looking. <laughs> oh, no, you just said that feet so, picks. So yeah, that's why we named our. Uh, that's why we named our group chat. If you can't handle the feet. Um, Send all our feet pics too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a guest on next week. On the Dutch, well, she was in the Dutch national team, kind of talking about kind of the weird fan altercations. But before we get to that, you DM said, us some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. A very open person yeah, that we're gonna have. I got on, so. offered a lot of money for certain things, and I haven't done them, and I'm not going to ask us some weird questions. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But you actually to to get to the kind of the the uh, the topic of our discussion here um you had sent me a video did you think two videos the first video was of uh, lopez from cuba playing sada casero did i pronounce mm-hmm. that right and uh brazilian was, league yeah he was Super like after Liga. a point and he goes and they're kind of chirping back and forth and back and forth and he's at the net he's after the point the guy's like right there the opposing guy's right there takes him pa! slaps him across the face and you don't see that a lot in volleyball and then you had slivka Against your old teammate, Linus Faber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I uh, remember something like uh, he tooled or no, Faber got a block on him, or the team got a block on him. You said maybe Faber said something across the net, and then Slivka goes into the net as if he's going to approach him, but the team separates them, and that kind of got me in the the mindset of, uh, of uh, volleyball fights and and whatnot. What, if you were to think of now, now here's the thing: volleyball fights don't happen a lot that we hear about I think they do happen a lot more than people think it's just not televised it's in these different corners and pockets of professional volleyball that we may not hear about if you were to guess what league you, you would like be like okay these guys have like the most fights in Greek I think hands really? down in the Greek league yeah How come? I just saw something last night happen again what happened between the two rivals uh, I can't I'm really bad at pronouncing it benches well, it's the fans. The fans are insane. They're the ones who light the smoke and the fire in the crowd, and then they'll s- throw stuff at the court. Flares? They f- throw flares. The flares. The yeah, this happened a couple times. Um, Greece used to also be known 
also used to be uh, known to throw batteries and stuff at athletes, like during like like ho- like really, really dangerous stuff. I'm sure it still happens, but not as much as it used to. Because Greece also used to have one of the biggest budgets with a lot of their professional volleyball teams, so they would have you know Clay Stanley played there, Lloyd Paul, like a lot of big time players uh, <laughs> in the two th- early two thousands. That was a league that was really popping off and had a lot of top teams, and they had just a lot of issues. Uh, with the fans and player interactions, I know, and of course, like stuff was, but there's stuff between the players. But usually, that's the more mild interactions. And I know you have some stories from your team last year, mm-hmm. but usually, the most intense interactions are always between the opposing fans and the away team um, on the court oh, in, yeah. in these in these countries that you see. Also, like I say, a lot of Eastern European countries where fans get into it. Uh, you see that happen a lot. Is would you would you say that? Would you put South America in there? There's a lot of fights there. I know Argentina isn't league anymore, pretty much. But Brazil there. Maybe I don't know. Not as much as. Greece. I I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff come out of there besides that one with Lopez, which you rarely see. Which I'm, we'll have to drop the links and stuff and show. Maybe Harry, our editor, Sorry, show Harry. show the videos here that Gage is talking about. If you're on Spotify, the Sorry. Lopez where he just smacks the crap out of. You know who's in the video? American middle blocker. Austin oh, Wilmot. Also, oh, it was his team that got slapped. Yeah, and he runs up. Really? And when I saw the video, I'm like, "There's." N- Austin was trying to come. I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> let him go." <laughs> Those are that Austin. Once somebody hits somebody, you just gotta let it because they're both getting carded and something. They're both yeah. getting tossed out of the game. But, so well, just let them go for some, entertainment purposes. If someone's getting hit, might as well get a red card too. You know, throw. No, they're a getting a red. Card. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, you get one too. Just you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The game's not gonna get well. It'll continue. The game. Depending where it might continue, but they're both getting tossed out of the game. Dude, I saw this one video, and I'll get to a few of the stories that I have personally, and that I saw online. I saw this one guy. It was it was like a coach. I think it was Sonic Zero as well. Back in the day, way back in the day, and they were under the net. You know, I I realized that after like looking up a lot of the uh, the altercations happen when they're crossing the net mm-hmm. and they're shaking hands after the game because that's when you're closest and you have physical contact to them. You know, it slowed down. And the guy is, I think they, they it, it was blocked by a player when it happened. I think they took a shot at each other. Then the two coaches from their side, they took their player, they put him in an arm bar. The other one grabbed him and was like, th- and they were just like yanking him back to the line. And what happened, they're like older, like chubbier guys. And he's arm bar and the liber- it's a libero. And he's trying to get past them and trying to go fight him. But he has him in an arm bar. And he's like dragging him to the back line. And eventually the coach just lays on him. You hear this big, like, 70-year-old, like, chubby coach just lay on this guy. And the libero is small, so he's, like, trying to scrape up. And then all everyone just starts laying on this libero until he calms down. It was intense. It was intense. Um, Why don't you tell your story of your team last year? Okay. The one interaction. I, that was it's a personal interaction. <clears throat> also, I don't... Um, you have to tell the reputation of some yeah, of these yeah, guys, yeah. too. So, because- like, well, here's the thing. I, before, I don't want to offend anyone, and I'm not really sure what the correct term terminology is. Um, like for example, when I first got to Bulgaria, they called the certain ethnicity that kind of like the homeless and whatever, and very common gypsies. I think, I think maybe they called Romas too. I'm not really sure. Um, but I, I, I I'm sorry if I don't know any better. I, I, I mean, I don't really it's, know you're speaking better. in context of the story because right. it's what they call them. Like they have to know like w- what instigated this fight. Right. Even okay. though it's, it can be seen as a derogatory term. But it is a drug. It can't be seen. It, but you, it's the context it's like of the that's story. People though. That's like a real, yeah. Yeah, you, but you got, you got, it's the context of the story, so it's the important part. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, so this is what happened. This is, all right, this is how, this is about the story about when I almost, like, got, I almost, like, got attacked by a bunch of drunk gypsies um, in Bulgaria last year, and we had to run out of the gym. It was crazy. Um... So we're going to we're going to play this game, right? And it's kind of like a must win game for us. Not a must win, but f- last year we worked our our way up from seventh place to third place miraculously by the end of the season, right? Not miraculous, but we had some good victories and some teams lost. It was good for us. So what happened was we go to this village, and they don't have in Bulgaria they don't have like they have town cities, but it's mainly just villages. So we go to this village, and it's actually a really really nice gym, newly built and everything like that. And they, before the game, they're like they warn me. They like, hey, like before, uh, before you go in here, just know, like it's gonna get a little wild in here. 
They're going to have a lot of fans, right? They're not the best team, but, you know, at home, they got, like, guys with, like, heavy arms and, like, and, like crazy, crazy fans. So we enter the gym, and it's a really nice gym. Like I said, everything's nice, and it starts filling up per game time. Everything's filling up, everything's filling up, everything's filling up. And um, so how they have in, in like, that ex-communist countries, they have, like, they build their gyms. Like, only one side has, like, like long things of arenas, kind of like BYU. Um, and so what happened was it just got full of just a bunch of drunk gypsies. And before the game even started, they're chirping and they're getting loud and they're getting loud and they're throwing stuff like coins. In Bulgaria, they throw coins. They don't really, they don't really, you know, it's not really. And they used to throw worse and like spit and whatever. Um, and our setter, uh, shout out to my boy, Jorge Brate of the OG. Um, he is known for instigating the crowd, the ref, et cetera, et cetera. He's a true ma- maestro of the game in terms of controlling the game. Yeah, he's a former captain. Yep. Former, a little Olympian. background of him. Yeah, he was in Trentino. He was in uh, Poland. He was one of the greatest well, international players, actually. One of the best setters in the world. They lost in the bronze medal match in London in 2012. He was their setter, a twin brother who was also on the team. One of the, He used to be one of the greatest setters, in the better, best setters in the world. I think in the 2011 World Championship, he won uh, He won best setter, actually, um, in, in the World Championship. So he's he's now he's a little older now. He's not as fast, but he still has – that mind is still sharp, and he's still in his, in his head. He's like, I can still got a competitive edge. And he is known – for outbursts, and I've told many, and I've told many, many stories of this on the podcast of many as outbursts, and I haven't told many, and I'm sure it will come up sooner or later here. So um, he's known to instigate the crowd. Then we also had a Russian, um, and he's just a guy that every time in practice he would mess up, he would kick a ball to the every time without fail. He would kick a ball to the top of the stands. He would take it. He'd say, I think it's in Russian, it's net. He'd take the ball and he'd boot it in practice to the top. And then he started kneeing him. And he would just get just as far. It was actually kind of impressive. He'd be like, net, and knee the ball, throw it on his knee, and it started flying. And he got, it was pretty impressive how far he got on that. And then eventually, but eventually in the end of the year, he just kind of left our team randomly. It was weird. I don't know. So. What happened, so that, so he was also kind of a little, you know, he liked to kind of like give crotch shots to the fans too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'll get to where that kind of plays in here. And then you got me, who's just in the middle of it, just like stupid, ignorant America that doesn't know any better, just kind of going out there like, what the hell's going on? So what happens is we start the game, right? I think we start losing the first set. We're losing the first set. We go, we go, it goes about 17 15. And Jore and the crowd's chirping, chirping, and the gypsies are going, not going after me, but they're going after other people, right? And they're just loud, you know, in there. And uh, Jore, hey, hey, I need a time, I need a time really quick to the ref. One second. He goes past the ref stand, right to where the bars are, to where the um, uh, um, the fans are. His, his shoes are completely tied. He, he makes sure to untie his shoes. And just quiet. All of a sudden, they're like, everyone's like, it just got quiet. The closer he got to the fans, right? He was just kind of walking very slowly, looking down, you know, as if he was going to tie his shoes. But he kept walking to go closer to the fans. As he got closer and closer, everyone got quieter and quieter and quieter. Like, oh, crap, something's about to happen. So he goes, and what he does, he does kind of half kneeling thing. He does his half kneeling thing like he's about to tie his shoes. You see him lift his head. And I'd obviously, even if I heard him, I wouldn't know what he was saying. But you hear him say something. As soon as he said something, the whole crowd's like, Wah! and the entire crowd comes to the bars like they're about to come after Jore. And luckily there was a bunch of security guards to hold him back. And they're like, oh my God. And they're yelling. And I'm like, oh my God. Our coach has no, no control of the situation whatsoever. Whatsoever. And they're just going crazy and crazy and crazy and crazy. We lose the first set. The second set goes by. We end up winning. It's getting crazier and crazier and crazier. By the time the second set hits, there are about three re- yellow cards and one red card being drawn. So cards were all, all the way. So third set goes. All of a sudden, it gets intense, 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 intense. It's about the middle of the set. And all of a sudden, I just hear this. The, the crowd's loud to begin with. And the eruption from the crowd before. <coughs> I hear this eruption from the crowd before. Um, I mean, before they're about to serve. And all of a sudden, we all look. And it's our freaking physio. He's climbing. I mean, like, like think about, like, bleacher seats. He's, like, he's like on all fours, just climbing up this freaking, uh, the freaking bleachers to go fight a guy. 
And he's like, ah! and, and then all of a sudden our president has to ru- a president of the club has to go and grab him and hold him back. And the security and the police kind of hold him back. And they, he was about to go fight this guy. And they were, he's literally just, I think about like a lion going up the, it was crazy. I was like, what the hell is going on? This is when our, and then eventually they kick one of the guys out. Then our right side decides to start throwing crock shots and just pelvic thrusts at the crowd. He goes, gets a kill. Literally, I kid you not, goes like this. I'm sorry for our Spotify listeners. I'm going to explain this as best I can. The two-handed crock chop, ba 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 ba. The crowd just like humping at the crowd. He's like giving thrust to the crowd. Third set. The gypsies are going wild. And I'm just standing like, I'm in six. I'm just like standing there because the game stopped and the rest trying to control the situation. <laughs> I'm just standing there. And that's when the gypsies started going at me. Because I kind of make eye contact, just smiling and laughing at one. He takes his thumb like a knife situation and kind of gives me, I'm going to kill you. Like, the, I'm going to slit your throat. Like, um, what is it? The the move? I think yeah. I'm going to slit your throat. Kind of like that. And I'm like, oh, my God. I, I just start laughing at him. And they just start chirping me. I don't understand what they're saying. And you know me. I just kind of brush it off. Like, I don't really care. And it gets crazier. And then our coach kind of controlled Jory. And then Jory goes to the crowd, is yelling. Then he sh- starts, he's, he's shaking the ref stand by the fourth set. He's like, ah. He eventually gets a yellow card. Our rights, I hadn't got a yellow card yet. Their coach, have you ever seen, you know Miracle, you know Miracle, Joe, your favorite movie of all time. You know the Soviet coach who has the bushy eyebrows like this? like this? That's what he looks like. Really intense, like evil looking, super Eastern Euro looking guy. So he's like an intense coach and he coaches a lot of the youngsters there. Fifth set happens. It's 7-7 seven, seven in the fifth set, right? And uh, uh, what happens is our best server goes back to serve. Again, our opposite decides to throw another crotch shot to the crowd, of course. Starts chopping his junk at the crowd. Then we get a red card. Then our best server is off the line. Eight, seven, then we switch side. We're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the crowd That's what the red card is for? Yeah, yeah. And then and then everyone's just like, Jesus, you got to be kidding me. So by the time we're like, you got to be kidding We can't lose Did he game. argue when he got the red card? Jory just looked at him like this. Just like, oh, my God. But Jory has gotten a red card already in that game. So it was completely fine. He's, I mean, he was losing it. He was, the savage of playing that game, I've never seen anything like it. Because he went to the crowd. He went back. And he went crowd. And he went and did all this stuff to the crowd. I don't want to say... He may have spat at the crowd at one point. I'm not. I if I remember that's the exact game. I remember him spitting a lot in a lot of matches. I swear it was in that game too. You know, so they were going out and they were throwing stuff at us and whatever bottles and whatever at us, right? So plastic bottles, luckily, luckily. Um, so by the by the fifth set, it's thirteen all. I'm playing in six. Their outside goes hits a ball, sprays off the court. And I go run, I chuck it in, I save it, I try to keep it on our side. I was I was behind the behind the end on it. And I chuck it back in, barely makes it inside the antenna, gets in, right? We end up winning the point. The coach freaks out from that team. The evil guy from Miracle. He by the time the ball lands, he's already in the middle of the court trying to yank the net down. And he's and he's like he's throwing it at and then he's like literally, I've never seen someone gr- I mean, you see people out of frustration trying to tear the net down. This guy, I've never seen anything like this. He is just, whoo, whoo, whoo. I mean, he's tugging the crap out of this thing. And he almost gets, he, he like they had to like realign the antenna because he was smacking the antenna too. And all this, 14, 13, we end up winning. Everyone goes crazy. But I was like, yeah. And everyone looks at me like, Gage, get the F out of here. Because the Gypsies start, that's when, that's when they really got really close. And there's about four security guards. Four security guards versus a couple hundred Gypsies. That's not going to do anything. We're on the other side of the court, and the uh, in the in the exits on the other side of the court, at, like it's not like that close, but we have to go close to the bars where the gypsies are. We're like, get your crap, get the hell out of here. So we run, and then they're getting closer. They get past the security guards. We're running out, right? And I, I remember looking back and be like, Jesus Christ, they're like on the court. By the time we get out, we barely screw out. They're like, Gage, grab yourself. And once you get out of this hall, the the arena, do not walk. Run to the cars, and we ran about like I don't know. We ran for like two or three minutes straight. We got out of there, luckily, drove out of there, uh, got out of there with a win and our lives. So that was a long, long story, but uh, it's just crazy over there, man. It's just crazy. It's crazy. So crazy. I don't think you're right. I mean, you, you've all you played in Germany for four years, and you've 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 you've, 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 you've visited those countries. Man, th- those are some dogs over there, bro. They don't mess around. Yeah, the 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 clubs we play for CEV, they uh, like. You have to keep everything under control there, though, because CEV is watching. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> you don't like, league matches are a little less 
what's it called? Supervised, I guess is mm-hmm. the right word. But for CEV, everything's pretty professional. Excuse me. Um, and so yeah, but playing in Germany, obviously you don't deal, you just deal with a lot of noise. They make a lot of noise in the arenas, but there's not like any malicious type of <laughs> stuff like that. There's actually um, uh, I've noticed like when looking at it, there's a lot of fights uh, with the ref. There's usually people attacking the ref. I just watched a video the other day. Ref made a bad call. It was a women's match. President comes down from the stands, shakes the ref off the ref stand, gets him off the ref stand, and starts swinging at him. And they have to separate him. It's crazy. It's always like like you see like people like attack the refs a lot. I feel like that's more yeah. common in volleyball. It's usually not going to end up too well. Not going to get too much out of that out of attacking the ref. Yeah, but attacking the other player that's where that's where that's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? You ever been close to attacking a ref? A ref? No, I've never been close. What to are a player? Only person I've been close to attacking is you, uh, in a match. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Or just certain moments you just didn't feel. Yeah, the Duran match three weeks ago oh, was the closest. I, I was so mad at you because of various reasons we talked about, mm-hmm. but obviously like much more mature now. But when we were younger, we got close to fighting in practice a couple times. But our no, we fought one time in a training session in Hawaii. No, it no, was in, in pack rim. Pack rim with our Hawaii teammates. And we just fought in the pack rim. Yeah, Do you want our to team never. No? Our team never had seen us fight, and we were training all day. And Gage uh, knows that there was some personal life stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was just instigating and pushing and being on Gage's ass all day, all morning. And then we get into. Uh, ladders and during the ladder line i like to go like for agility work i um i like to say that my agility is pretty pretty good so i can go pretty fast with it but i was like going also right behind gauge and i was just going super quick and being right on his heels and i would just clip his heels sometimes just you know to let him know i'm there and he just got annoyed and he turned around at one point because i just kept doing it and kept like it's it because we were already like heading into the training session. There's already built up tension, mm. uh, and so we were just like, you know, we were just dogs that day, and we were ready, like just ready to get after it. That's the one thing is like we are the way we were raised. We have a very aggressive approach to sports. Like even in volleyball, where it's not a it's not a violent sport necessarily, or a contact sport. We're still like very aggressively minded. Like we how we think about stuff. Like people are like scared sometimes when they hear. Um, but like even this, like we're just always like super aggressive, and that's just how we are when we get in our arena, our man in the arena. Um, shout out Tom Brady. Um, we just are extremely aggressive, and yeah, tur- he turned around. I think you just shoved me first, mm-hmm. and I just and I went straight, took him to the ground, and we just started wrestling and punching each other. And we go, and my dad's like all, my dad's always like just let him go, and he's just watching. And he, because he was the one running the session, and all the guys, they always like joked about seeing us. They never actually seen us fight, like legit fight, yeah. get pissed off at each other and see us fight. And they were like, like after they said they were scared for a second, they didn't know how to react, because they like, when you, if you see how we fight, it's not like joking around fighting. It's like we're in an octagon and we'll like slam each other through like our heads through closet doors and yeah. stuff like that. And that's always, but obviously we don't do that anymore. We don't really wrestle. We, a lot of head trauma when we're younger. Yeah, exactly. And so we, like, when we fight, we get after it. That's why people, a lot of times, even though we're small and we don't, like, look, like, super intimidating, it's all about the mindset with us in the fight. And we're willing to go through a lot to win mm-hmm. at a lot of things. If we're very passionate and we're very, Mike is the same way, very stubborn, willing to endure a lot. So... Why don't you think that volleyball kind of volleyball? They, why don't I feel like a lot of volleyball players don't have that kind of mindset? Yeah, it's just like the people they think it's they, the that way it's volleyball the, fights don't happen. No, no, it's the tracked. culture. Oh, it's the type of person that's coming into the sport. Right. non contact The way the way they're raised is a very specific. Volleyball is a very affluent sport in general. I'm, I'm not. It means there's a lot of money in the sport, which means um, that you know majority I'm like see. if you if and this is. Obviously, it's not like every all places, but in general, you, even over here in Europe, they talk about it too. It's like volleyball is a sport where it's dominant in a lot of affluent areas in the U.S. And, you know, people are raised in a certain 
way in that, mm-hmm. in that. and just like I was watching something on Deion Sanders the other day I love his content if you guys get a chance go check it out he's doing something really great Colorado but the content they have coming from it is super sweet you just see behind the scenes of everything that he's doing um he's the head coach at Colorado for those who don't know University of Colorado football um God, but he was just talking about different uh, backgrounds of players that he's looking for for different positions. So like he talks about offensive linemen. He's like, for offensive linemen, I want kids with, uh, and I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm just saying it's an interesting viewpoint because it just shows like even he like recognizes the difference in the way kids are raised. But he's saying for offensive linemen, uh, he wants kids with two parents. He's like, I don't want, I don't want anybody to, because he's like, you know, they grow up and they have a man in their life and they understand, you know, the whole thing about protection and, and stuff and he just sees like like um that they come a little more disciplined and stuff which is just interesting like he's very open about saying this and then he says for like his defense alignment his nose tackles and stuff he's like i want those guys coming from the street he's like i want these guys you know just absolutely hunting for food like that, that's the kind, of, the kind of mindset i want like he he and he kind of breaks down each position of like the type of person he's looking for in those areas and it's just really interesting because i've never i've never seen a coach do that but when he was explaining it you're like okay, i can understand like why that fits that position the mindset you have to have um same thing in volleyball though the kids like the communities they're coming from you know the way that they're raised the households they're coming from it's not a very like like people see how we were raised and micah was raised and they're just like astonished even john Spraw, he would come into our practice gyms and see how we train and stuff he just like mind blowing because it just ha- like the intensity of it i think he i think a lot of people feel it's like unnecessary in the sport but also it's the same people that like when gage mike and i play them in grass it's it has nothing to do with skill obviously we've played for a long time we play like we're fortunate to play like at high levels in certain and have really cool opportunities to play you know place like hawaii play professionally and there's plenty of people out there with skill, but it's, when they play against us, it's a complete mindset thing. And even our opposite, Lucas Mazza here, was talking to me the other day about our grass team. He's like, he's like, I understand why teams have, like, it's incredibly difficult to ever beat you guys. It's because the mindset. He's, he's like, you guys can go straight from the start 110% and know how to get there mentally. He's like, so many players don't know how to get to that point. And to be honest, it's difficult for myself at times, for somebody who can't just, like, flick the switch like that. Because I've played – a majority of people cannot, like, I'll be honest. Like, But there's, like, something, like, when I can flick the switch, like, um, so many people have told me, like, they can just see, like, in my eyes, like, it changes a little bit. And, and I know, like, the feeling I can do it, like, right when I want to. Um, And it's just, like, an aggressive, like, violent mindset. I, and it sounds like weird and scary, but it's not like I'm trying to like physically hurt the other person. It's just like a mentality of like like survival almost and stuff. And just the in Micah Gage and I share that ex, share that mindset on the court, and that's the biggest reason why I think it's so difficult for teams to compete on us for a consistent like teams can hang with us and stuff. But it's like. It's so difficult when we're all on the same team. And it's just us three. Like, there's nobody else on the team, and it's just us three. It's like, it's going to be really freaking tough to get past that just from a mindset perspective. Gotcha. That's my long, I agree. long No, 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 answer. I agree, I agree. I think that another another big thing is that uh, they talked about us and our mindset and how people don't really have an aggressive mindset. Also, I can talk about like when we were, when we were youth. Also, why there's not like much aggression is also maybe it's changed. I think it's changed lately because I we've been on a club team for a little while, but our dad owns a club, so I think it was two. I think it was about a year or two ago since we were like last really in the club scene. But after that, we've been really apart from it. It's also a fact that um, uh, volleyball is also a sport that was like a not for like cool, popular, athletic kids. It was a lot of geeky kids, a lot of unathletic. That was like a no cut kind of sport. So you see, you know. People like that, the least likely to get in a fight or whatnot, which is not a bad thing, you know. I mean, everyone has their own kind of background and, and, and play style, but I think that's also a big reason why. And then also, I think that Western Europeans, they don't really fight. As you kind of said, like we kind of say it's more, it's going to be anyone's going to be the Eastern Euro, Greece, 
um, type of people that kind of – and the thing is that Western Euro- European clubs are the ones that get the most TV and all this other stuff and, you know, usually the better teams and whatnot. So they get all those views and so you're not going to see it. So volleyball fights do happen, you know. And then and the last – I think the last people that would do it would be the Asian communities. Like they're all – they're all just like the fans are so happy. Everyone's yeah. just there. Well, so a lot happy. about respect and appreciation. Yeah, yeah the culture. I, it's very similar. Like you see in Hawaii. I mean, yeah. obviously with the influence there and everything and the culture there, it's the same thing. It's like it's a totally different volleyball culture than a lot yeah. of other places. I saw this uh, volleyball clip to wrap things up here. I saw this volleyball clip of uh, in Asia. It was uh, I think it was either in like one in Jap- Japan or South Korea. They host these like. Uh, um, they host these like all star teams every week or every month or something like that, and they ha- and it's like a fun thing like dance. So one people like going at it, going at it, they're gonna fight, they're gonna fight, and they just end up kissing. <laughs> like, it's like that's volleyball in a nutshell right there. And I'm not saying we're not provoking fights. If there were fights, it'd be pros and cons of it. The pros, great for the sport, probably more media coverage. Be like, yeah, you know, entertainment cons, value goes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cons, probably less money in it, you know, because that's not like. You're not like combine you, UFC yeah. and volleyball. yeah, it it I don't know. It's just yeah, and like I said, like I said, everyone says there's no fights, but there are fights. We're not provoking it, but we're also not saying it wouldn't be a bad thing. So this next couple coming matches, look for Joe and I to start swinging. Um, see where it gets us. You know, the team we play this weekend. Or anybody else, you know, it's like one of the more like provo- provocative, provocative, pr- provocative. No. Yeah, yeah, provocative. Like, in um. And they instigate a lot. Like, they're constantly doing that. So, and we don't put up, like, we don't even interact because they need that. Like, that's a team that, like, needs that in order to be able to play at a high level. And so, you just let them be and they talk stuff and say weird stuff through the net. But, they really weird stuff. But, hey, we don't say this enough. We haven't talked about it. Merchandise, out of system.net. We have a bunch of cool merchandise. There's going to be new stuff coming out soon. Um, Everybody knows our relationship with Slunks. You guys got to be t- paying attention on that. I'm not, you know, I'm just dropping just a hint. A little, I'm just dropping a hint here. Just dropping a hint here. May or may not have some new pairs. May or may not be a different design. New design. Trinities. May or may not. You know, some we we heard from somebody that something might be, uh, you know, in the mix there. Uh, also, this summer we started announcing events for our tour. We'll get the full full tour layout next week. But we have instead of doing uh, clinics into this summer. We've built out camps. We've built out one on the East Coast, Midwest, and now on the West Coast. Uh, The first two have been announced. East Coast we're doing in North Carolina, three-day camp in May. The second one is in Iowa, uh, Davenport, and that is three days in June. Uh, Those camps are up. Registration links are up. It's first come, first serve. They're going to fill up. We're going to have really sweet coaching staff, elite coaches from collegiate coaches, professional athletes, Olympians. We we have a very – and for each event, kind of different variety of coaches that we're bringing in for that. Of course, you're going to have the out-of-system crew, the most important team. Uh, we're going to be there. Everybody there, you get free out-of-system shirts and in, in, in designs, which was really cool, put together by Micah. Um, but go check out the website, outofsystem.net. All that information's there. There's merchandise. Um, stay up to date. We appreciate all the support, but big stuff coming for the summer. We're super excited. There's still a couple really big things we haven't announced. Um, but you guys are going to be ecstatic when we do. Thank you, CEO Joe. And with that being said, just remember, if you can't handle the goddamn kitchen, this has been another episode presented by Alice.